state of New Hampshire. He is currently serving his first term and has the distinction of being the youngest governor in our country. Among his accomplishments during his first year in office was delivering a balanced state budget with no new taxes or fees and establishing full day kindergarten. Additionally, Governor Sununu doubled funds to fight the opioid crisis, made investments in clean water projects, expanded educational opportunities for students, and signed job-creating business tax cuts into law. As a private educational institution with a distinct mission in the state of New Hampshire, we are blessed to have a real champion of school choice with us today. We have a true friend in Concord helping us to keep diversity in education as a state priority. Before he was elected governor in 2016, Chris served three terms on the New Hampshire Executive Council, representing 32 cities and towns in Rockingham and Hillsborough counties. In 2010, Chris led a group of investors in the buyout of Waterville Valley Ski Resort, where he worked as the Chief Executive Officer and was in charge of the expansion of the ski resort, done in cooperation with the U.S. Forest Service. An environmental engineer, Chris worked for 10 years cleaning up hazardous waste sites across the country. In 1998, Chris completed a five-month through hike of the Appalachian Trail from Georgia to Maine. We have some hikers in the room. So students, we're here to announce a new field trip. Chris grew up in the metropolis known as Salem, New Hampshire. He graduated from MIT with a BS in Civil and Environmental Engineering. He lives in Newfield with his wife Valerie and their three children, Calvin, Edie, and Leo. Ladies and gentlemen, let us give a warm Jesse Rivers to our governor. I really, I cannot thank you enough. Um, uh, I thought what I'd do, I'm, I'm going to do my best to keep within my five minutes, but look, anytime you get to not be in the State House, it's a good day. Because uh, the State House can be a little much. It's a lot, uh, to be sure, but to be able to come out here uh, and spend the time and visit a place I've heard so much about. Uh, I think we originally, Jeff, I think we originally met at the Expo last year, and then we saw you again this year. And uh, I said, we're coming. We're definitely coming because uh, obviously, you know, when we talk, I think a lot of folks, we talk a lot about school choice in the state. And we have been. We really elevated that discussion, what that means, right? Um, overall, I think folks can, can get a pretty good sense. Things in the state are going really well. Uh, we've really focused on business. We've focused on the economy. We've focused on lowering taxes and rate, de deregulation and all these things to get things moving in the right direction. Kind of capitalize on what I saw was the untapped potential in the state. State's always going to be pretty good. It's always going to be pretty good. We have no sales tax and no income. Although they tried an income tax this year, but we stopped that. So no sales tax, no income tax. I mean, we just have great fundamentals: local control, community-driven programs, and, and even in in our major metropolitan areas of, of Manchester, it's still a very community-driven place compared to almost anywhere else you're going to find in the country. And because of that, New Hampshire's always going to be in a, a pretty darn good position. But it wasn't the best at, at certain. Right? We're not, we, we've kind of settled a little bit. It's good, but this is New Hampshire. Good isn't good enough. Right? So it's about capitalizing on it. So I've really focused, and our team has focused a lot on kind of getting back to the basics of the economy. Because I believe that when you focus on the economy, business is going well, and we have the highest per capita income, and lowest poverty rates, and you know, best wage growth, and da 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 Those are all great statistics. But that is what creates opportunity at the state level. Right? So you know, when we lower taxes, for example, everyone says, well, Governor, you're going to blow a hole through the budget. No way. This can't be done. You shouldn't be lowering taxes. And I said, trust me, I, we know what we're doing. And sure enough, the biggest problem we have right now, in all seriousness, is we have a lot of money at the state, almost too much. We really do. And so when the, the state ends up having extra money, there are two kinds of, of people, those who want to spend it and create more government, and those of us who want to give it back. And so we're really making a big push in terms of giving it back, sending it back to cities and towns, investing in local schools and infrastructure projects. That's one-time money. So you've got to be smart. You can't run the state like a business because it's the public's money, right? I mean, in a way, we have a, have a board of directors of 1.3 million people, and, uh, and they should have a lot of say in how we spend that money. I just believe in that. Uh, very different than some previous administrations, but 
Um, you can bring those business ideals of one-time money is one-time investment, sending it back when you when you have a lot, and creating something that's sustainable. I mean, I'll, I don't know if you know, in this state, I'm one of only two governors in the country, me and Phil Scott in Vermont, we got to get elected every two years. And um, it stinks. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you. It's tough. But, but, it's complete, but in, in, when you get, get to it, though, it's complete accountability. The power is in your hands, not, not our hands, which is the way it should be. Uh, it's frustrating that I'm governor and I have, to, I have to keep running. But the reason I bring that up is, is this. All right, I'm going to give you guys my back. I'll back up. Um, the reason I, uh, I bring that up is this. Traditionally, this state thinks in two-year chunks. You know what I mean? Because it's all about the next election. We'll create a policy to get us by for the next couple of years and we'll deal with it again later. So one thing we're trying to bring is sustainability, thinking long term. I'm not going to be governor forever, hopefully a little longer. Uh, but I but I know I'm not going to be governor forever, and uh, because it's public service. It's just it's, I, I'm an engineer and I ran the ski resort and I can't wait to go back to doing some form of any of that. Don't know what yet. But the point is, is that I want to make sure five, ten, twenty years down the road, we created a foundation that really we built good habits, so to say, and we built sustainability. So one, one of the many things that we focus on, we've got a lot done, to be sure, in just 18 months here, but was schools and education. I'm a big believer the best thing you can do if you want to go for the long term, it sounds a little cliche coming from a politician, but it's all about the kids, right? If you get it right, if you create foundations that make sense from everything from early childhood development, that's why people thought I was, people thought I was governing your politically crazy because you're going to focus on full day kindergarten. They said, no Democrat even proposed that. How are you going to get it done? And I said, we're going to get it done because I really believe it. Because I really believe in early, focusing on early childhood development. We have some issues with abused kids and a, and a system that wasn't doing what it should do to protect children. Opportunities at the kindergarten level, all of that kind of stuff. And again, opportunity is the key word. right? Because you live in this town and she lives in that town. You're both in New Hampshire. It's about creating that equal opportunity. Why does that kid have an opportunity that that child doesn't? Government, government is not here to guarantee much. I really believe that. We are not here to guarantee much of anything except opportunity. My job is to create as many doors as we can, as many opportunities as I can, and then you, as your family, as a student, as an individual, as a business, it's your job to walk through them or not. Live your die. Do it. Do whatever you want to do. But my job is to really help create those opportunities, not where I think we've gone in some, some previous years where we were trying to funnel people into a system or funnel people into an institution. And the trick of government, what is the big magic trick of government? I found out. I found out. I, I rubbed the magic lamp and the genie told me. But this is it. How do you get the big government, big institutions, to focus on the individual? Right? We can create policies all day long, we can invest money all day long, we can pass budgets all day long, but if we're not creating opportunities and focusing on what is going to help him or her, or this one or that one, that is the trick. And so by, again, thinking long term and putting, I call it the stories. I spent a lot of time outside of the state house because, let's take the opioid crisis. We all know this, this is an opioid crisis. This is a drug crisis in this state. It has been for some time. For a long time the state ignored it, I refused to do it. The only way to find out what's, what we do next isn't to talk amongst ourselves in the state house. It's to sit with a mom who lost a daughter. It's to sit with a brother who lost a sister. It's to sit with someone who's gone through the same recovery cycle again and again and again. And say, what happened? Where did the system fail you as an individual? And when you get those stories, that's just one example, when you get those stories, you then take those stories and you turn those into better policy. Right? People should create the policy, not the politicians. We should just be the tool to get done what you guys need done. So that's why it all comes back, why do I focus so much on school choice? Because it's opportunity. It's that simple. Look, I love public schools. I love, I'm the first governor in 25 years in the state to come up through public schools in New Hampshire. They were some of the best in the country, a foundation, and will continue to be the foundation for our educational system for a long time to come. It's wonderful. It doesn't work for everyone. It's just not the right best option for everyone. Um, uh, so I don't know, if some of you know my background a little bit. My, my wife and I, we homeschooled for about three years. And then we tried the local public school. We're from a tiny town called Newfields, uh, about uh, 20 miles away. And we live like about 100 yards from the school. So uh, uh, we tried the public, public school, and it was fine in the elementary grades after we homeschooled for a few years. Then we tried a charter school. 
Uh, but we just got waitlisted. I didn't get in. Very popular to our school, I guess, so that was great. It's a bummer to be waitlisted. Uh, but it's fair, right? It's all fair. It's all fair. No one gets preferential treatment, which I think is the absolute right thing. Um, and now my kids go to a very small Catholic school on the seacoast. And my, my son Calvin is right now in the seventh grade. Edie is in the sixth grade. And Leo is five years old, and he's a madman. And he runs all of it. Uh, so we are living it as parents, right? What is our next option? Where are we going next? I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I mean, that's why I was so excited to come here. Uh, my wife and I are going to be uh, coming, and Valerie's going to be coming to visit in the fall uh, when things kick back on. It could be about another year to figure out what's next as Calvin gets ready to go into high school. So um, it's all about those opportunities. And not just creating the opportunities. You can, have the, you can create the best opportunities in the world. You can have the best, as the, the example I use is you're a manufacturer. You invent widgets. I don't know what a widget does, but it's the best one around. It doesn't matter unless you tell people about it, unless you promote it, unless you talk about it, unless you go out and advertise, right? You gotta go sell it a little bit. We have great widgets in this state for all the different aspects of our lives. What we don't do very well in the state is promote, right? Like, this is a, this is a great widget. We're sitting in the middle of a great widget at, at Remington here, right? Let's promote it, let's make it bigger. Let's, let's folks, there's a lot of folks that probably don't even know you're here. A lot of them do in the local area, but as, as, kid, as is, is told by the, I would say the anecdote, but the proof is in the pudding, the fact that you have families that will travel so far to come to a place like this, where they get that one-on-one -on -one specialization, where they can excel, where they're not held back, where the best of their skill sets as a student can really come to life. And they're not just trapped in the four walls of the, the, the classroom, the four walls of the institution. For a lot of kids, that's fine. For these kids, and for these, those who are searching for this kind of opportunity, it's not. And so that's our job, is to keep, keep making it better and making it bigger and, and finding what the next thing is. So by the way, we should get a picture, because then I'll promote it. I got, I got a lot of people on social media that follow me. So I'm happy to promote it. I really do. And, and again, by doing that, by getting out there and talking about all these wonderful things, we're letting people open their eyes to opportunities that might be literally in their backyard, but they don't even know. Right? You know, I, I talk about, uh, because I, I work a lot with the nonprofits in the state. And um, maybe you've seen, I, do, I tend to do some wacky things. For homelessness, we slept on the streets of Manchester. And we raised a lot of money, right? And I made all my commissioners go sleep on the streets of Manchester with me. And it was great. We did the big homeless sleep on it. And we raised $300,000. It was really, really wonderful. Um, you see, uh, in the middle of winter, I'm jumping in the ocean for whatever the cause is of the day. Um, and the next one coming, by the way, I'll just tell this side story. I think I'm going over my five minutes. Just going to get mad at me. So we're out at the sleep out. Here's my story. And WMUR is there. And they're filming me, and they said, Governor, you know, you've, you've decided to come out and support. I mean, even when things are going well, we have three to 400 kids on any given night that are homeless just in Manchester. Mm -hmm. Just in Manchester. And then, remember, homelessness isn't just a city problem. It's in every one of each of our communities. People couch surfing, they don't know what to do, families sleeping in cars. That's a reality. That's a reality. We have one of the most prosperous states in the country. We still have 10% of our kids that go hungry over the weekend. So you have to remember, right? Always be out there fighting for that. Just because things are going well doesn't mean there aren't folks that could use some help. So I'm doing the interview and we're talking about the, the, you know, how important it is. And there's a woman standing right next to me, very lovely lady. And she turned to me just as the interview's ending and she said, and governor, it's wonderful you're out here. You're gonna join us as we repel down the 20 story Brady Sullivan Tower in Manchester <laughs> to raise money for Granite United Rent. Right? And I went, now I'm definitely afraid of heights. And the camera's looking right at me. And as a good governor, I just went, you betcha. I'll be there. I tell that story because I'm not kidding. I am so scared. It's, so scared. it's coming up in like a month. And, uh, yeah, I've never been repelling off one story. I don't like going up a ladder. I send my 13-year-old to go up the ladder. I gotta go down 20 stories. And then, so, and then I just found out about a week ago, they said, Governor, you're going to have a team when you repel. And I said, what do you mean a team? Like, who's... And they said, oh, yeah, Senator Ayotte's going to be there with you. And all, they're naming all these very prominent people that are going to be there right with me doing it. And they love it. They do it. They do it. And Senator Ayotte, if you don't know, is like, she's an adventure seeker. She's amazing. So um, I'm happy. I will hike in the woods for five straight months from Maine to Georgia, as you all heard. But I, uh, repelling is, is not my, my strong suit. But the point is, we got to talk about it. We have 10 thousand nonprofits in our state. Do you know that? Ten thousand in our tiny state. 
So in all, each of our backyards, in our local communities, at the state, at the county level, whatever it might be, there's something going on. Someone has had a passion and said, I, I want to raise some money and help some cause, or I want to want to do something for someone, or do something for education, whatever it might be. So there's so much opportunity out there that a lot of us don't even know about yet. I mean, I don't even know about, about probably most of them, frankly. So it's incumbent upon us and seek that, that cherishes local control, that cherishes community, that cherishes faith and family and things that really make us who we are. We do it better. I'm just going to brag a little bit. I've traveled the rest of the country. I've visited other states. You know, and we share best practices. For example, I'll, I'll go talk to the governor of Ohio. What are you doing on the opioid crisis? They're dealing with an issue there. And we share our law enforcement practices with them because they're the best in the country. And they share how they get rural access to treatment with us, for example. So I travel around a lot and I visit with a lot of governors. And I'm not exaggerating. And I, I, maybe every governor needs to say this, but I really mean it. We do it better than everybody else. And it's those fundamentals I, I started with. It's not just the, the low taxes, it's limited government, local control, community, family, faith. These are the things that make us who we are. Not who the government is. Don't worry about the government. It's who we are as individuals. And what makes us important. And, and what, I should, what, what makes us understand what is important to us. Right? What are our values? Where are we going to go? I mean, I'm looking out, we, we got some seniors in the room, we got some freshmen in the room. I mean, there's two very different stories right there. The freshmen are just starting their journey here, the seniors are about to go off into the abyss. Who knows what's next? <laughs> it's all gonna be good, I promise, it'll all work out. It's a scary thing. I did my first commencement speech at PS uh, Plymouth State last weekend, and um, I kind of, I wing everything I say, I don't really write speeches too often, but it, it came out okay. Um, but one thing I said was, I said, look, accept something in your lives. And I say this to young people a lot, especially if you're, if you're about to make that step, that graduation, that, or that uh, commencement. It's funny, why is high school a graduation as an end, but college is a commencement as a beginning? See, I think and this is a commencement. This is where you're really about to long job, because the, the sky is the limit. But the scary thing, I'm gonna, now the governor's going to tell you something really scary. You have to accept something, for the seniors at least in the room, I would say this. Accept that between now, let's say five years from now, just five years from now, accept that you have no idea what you'll be doing, where you will be, or who you will be doing it with. You just don't know. Especially in today's world, everything can change on a dime. And often for the positive, right? That can be a scary feeling, at least for me. I like, I'm, a, I'm a planner, I'm an engineer. I like to design my system and plan things out. I'm going to go from A to B. Um, but in this day and age, everything can change on a dime. Opportunity can often present itself. Did I have, honestly ever think I was going to be governor? No way. I didn't, did I think I was ever going to run a ski resort? Never. Never even entered my mind. Right? I was going to be an engineer. I, I thought about uh, the whole story about what I thought about I was going to do. But, um, the whole point is, in this day and age, anything can, can present itself. And sometimes those are, are opportunities that are great and we grasp. Sometimes there are opportunities that don't make sense and we say, have to say no. We have to make those tough decisions. But that's, that's something to embrace. It's scary, but it's not. Huge, huge opportunity for you as individuals in carving your path. And that's what it's about, carving your path. It's not about institutions. It's not about the government telling you what to do or where to go. It's about making sure you and your family and what's important to you is really what we make sure those doors are open to every single day. You guys get it. I, I'm preaching to the choir. <laughs> the point is, we got to get that message out. we got to keep pushing it. Do we get SB 193, which would have really opened up school choice across the state? We didn't. We fell up literally five votes short. Those are tough days. When that vote came in, that was tough. That was, and, and there were a lot of votes that just didn't even show up that day. And I was like, oh my gosh, these people didn't show up. Um, does it mean that we stop? We just accept where we are? Say, yeah, we're good enough. No way. No way. Good enough is never good enough. So we'll keep coming at it. We'll keep trying it again. We'll keep working with folks to make sure that we get it right or get it better or find a better path the next time. You can't let the, the short-term losses discourage you. Um, and it's easy to do, especially in public service. And I'm looking around the room, I can see a lot of folks that are in public service here, right? I mean, we all know one of our representatives or someone on the planning board or someone on the school board committee or someone that's or donating their time to, to this school that might sit on the board. That's all public service for a greater good, something bigger and beyond ourselves. And again, I just think we do it better than, else, so better than everyone else. So look, thank you guys so much for, for inviting me.
Um, I'm happy to take questions, or, I, or, or Sununu, you went nine minutes, you're gone. Uh, I will walk away quietly if you like. I'm happy to take some questions, whatever you like. But I just can't thank you guys enough for allowing me to come. Thank you. representatives in the state, find the ones you like, find where there's gaps, and go and win work for them. This is a state where, you know, if you're 18 years old and you have $25 in your pocket, you can go to Kinko's, make some copies, knock on some doors, and you can be in the House of Representatives. Anyone can do it. So there's opportunity there to find the candidates that, that you like, that can actually get that kind of stuff done. Um, look, does your whole life have to revolve around finding a candidate to get you know, something like SB 193 done? No, but it would, it would help. Um, so, you know, get, just stay involved. Stay involved. Don't lose faith in the system. Our system actually works very, very well. Um, I mean, I would just to talk politics a little bit, I'll do my best not to talk about it too much, but there's this whole, the big blue wave is coming, and the Democrats are going to win this and this and this. And look, I, I don't... I try not to worry about the Democrat, Republican Democrat thing as much as just getting good people, right? People that, that understand that it's hard work. You have to give a little. Most people, folks in the state house are either retirees or they have a second job. I mean, it's, you get $100 a year. It's not a job, right? So it's truly public service. So find candidates. Stay involved. Yeah. Well, let's give it okay. a Thank, Thank you. Thank you.